Introducing a new technology layering engine for broadcast, live venues, and presentations. Multi-lane keen and mixed effects with an extraordinary intuitive iPad interface. New from Ensemble Designs. Hi, I'm Phil Kurz. I'm a contributing editor with Broadcast Engineering Magazine. I'm with Jim Kutzner, Senior Director of Advanced Technologies. Jim, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Uh, Jim, you've been leading a project that is related to mobile EAS. Uh, I know you have a lot of partners, but you've been taking a leadership role. I was yeah. hoping you might be able to bring us up to speed on where the trial stands and what you've accomplished. Sure. Uh, MEAS, Mobile Emergency Alert System, is a joint project between PBS and LG Zenith. Um, and uh, with a, a lot of strong support from Harris and Roundbox. Uh, we expect to, to have others, uh, but this is a uh, project to add uh, emergency alerts uh, to the mobile DTV system. So what we've done is um, we put together a system, uh, came up with a means of delivering emergency alerts uh, based on uh, CAP messages that will be coming from FEMA um, uh, through the IPAWS infrastructure. And in our project, uh, we put together um, public demonstrations. Uh, we first demonstrated publicly at CES, and then, um, and then again here at uh, NAB, and in intervening time between CES and NAB, we uh, demonstrated it at three public television stations, um, uh, first here in Las Vegas, again, to uh, the local emergency managers and the local officials in uh, Las Vegas and Clark County. And then uh, we went on to Boston and uh, WGBH, uh, our public station up there, uh, demonstrated it over the air to a lot of public officials, including their congressional delegation, uh, local and state uh, emergency uh, managers and, and the like, as well as fire police, other emergency responders. And then finally, uh, we demonstrated it in Montgomery, Alabama, Alabama Public Television. It's very uh, progressive and on the air with mobile as well in uh, two of their cities, Montgomery and Birmingham. And uh, Montgomery being the state capital, uh, it was demonstrated at the state capital uh, to their uh, various legislators and, and other officials there. So all three um, demonstrations of public stations um, frankly came out as we expected. Um, it, uh, you know, emergency uh, management is motherhood and apple pie. Nobody's going to argue against it, uh, against the need for it. But, um, to, to, you know, seriously, um, we got a lot of good feedback, a lot of good response that this is something that's really needed. Um, the whole project was really started uh, or uh, really stimulated by the events in Japan that I think we all know about and the, the fact that the, uh, the Japanese one seg system was for many people the only communications that they had and um, it was turned into a, a one-way um, you know, information distribution system and it worked out very well. Uh, we recognize that, that such, you know, with the uh, increase in mobile, mobile DTV, the, you know, the introduction of mobile uh, by the uh, two consortia and many public stations coming on the air, that adding this capability uh, would be important, um, an important feature, a very important feature. And uh, it's what Broadcaster's been doing, you know, it's providing emergency messaging um, in f legacy. Uh, uh, fixed uh, DTV, right. and now we need to move it to mobile. And uh, you can take advantage of some features of mobile that aren't uh, there on a fixed tr transmission system. So I was wondering if you might be able to talk about how the system leverages <coughs> some of those uh, opportunities. Yeah. Well, the uh, the system um, uh, has a, a co basically two components in in the functionality. There, there's a real time component where an emergency message, which is uh, taken right off the cap message, is uh, transmitted and then displayed over whatever somebody is watching uh, on, on a mobile device. And uh, that's, that's there. Um, I like to say it's mandatory. Uh, the user has uh, no, no intervention, no need to do anything. It's just um, there. Um, and in the intervening months, we've also like to add, we've also added um, a vibration, vibration feature in some of the devices that we're demonstrating for the uh, hearing impaired. That was a suggestion by uh, a gentleman from Gallaudet who came by our CES booth. We thought that was a very good idea. Uh, the other half of the, uh, ca of the capabilities built in uh, that we think is very important is to add rich media uh, to it. Um, so depending on what the emergency is, 
uh, rich media elements can be broadcast in non-real time using a new non-real time standard. Um, and that my, those uh, components might be uh, JPEG images, photographs, evacuation maps, uh, tornado paths, you know, whatever it might be appropriate for that emergency. Uh, we can also send HTML pages uh, with text and, or in embedded images, things like that. Um, we, can, we can also send short video clips uh, or audio clips, that sort. It really depends on what the emergency is. Um, so we're, uh, we're about at the end of phase one and uh, we're thinking about what is phase two. And uh, really thinking that phase two needs to be uh, operationalization. How do you make this really work? Mm -hmm. you know, we put together over the air real demonstrations in, in, a, in a bit of a canned approach. Um, we, we pretended to be FEMA. We're sending out uh, messages that we created based on the CAP standards and, um, and then uh, produced code that went into you know, re real mobile DTV phone receivers. And, uh, but now is the time to uh, ask ourselves, if, if you're going to put this in a real broadcast environment, how would you do that? And uh, lastly, there must be some involvement with ATSC to make this part of the standard for Abs mobile. And so where does that stand? Absolutely, good question. Um, the uh, at the core of this is um, a new a new table. Um, uh, we are going to be proposing to the ATSC that a new table be added. Uh, it will be backward compatible, and we know that to be true because our, our unmodified phones work just fine. And um, so we're uh, putting the finishing touches on that, and we hope to get that in front of the ATSC in the next few weeks for their consideration. So once it's standardized, then you know all manufacturers on both sides of the transmitter, you know, broadcast equipment as well as consumer equipment manufacturers, can weigh in, and then once the standard is adopted, um, they can go ahead and produce the products that are needed. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. And you're welcome. Thank you.